Hey guys, this is Matt from Nod Studios here, and welcome back. Today we're going to be starting up our new Hearts of Iron 4 series that's been long, 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 let me say it again, long, long awaited, guys. You have been pummeling me in the comments section below for a really long time to do a Hearts of Iron 4 series, and here it is. In the previous episode, we conducted a vote on which country we should play as. However, I left the vote completely up to you guys, and I probably shouldn't. I was really apprehensive of doing that because of, you know, the way it's turned out in the past. And the way that actually played out, and the way it played out this time, was every single country that received a vote only received one vote. Therefore, there was no winner. It was a tie all around. And I was really, really skeptical that this was going to happen, and it ended up happening. However, basically what I decided to go ahead and do was to choose a country out of the list that you guys had voted for. So every single country that received a vote was Algeria, North Korea, Egypt, the West African nation of Togo, China, Mongolia, Russia, Japan, Turkey, or Tajikistan or Azerbaijan. Those countries all received one vote. However, we are going to be playing as Egypt this time around. We aren't going to be playing with Iron Man mode or historical AI focuses enabled, and we will be playing with the default normal difficulty. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into things. Alright, and here we are folks. So the game has went ahead and loaded itself in, and as you can see we get the glorious Millennium Dawn sort of opening prompt here. The party support system. I don't really care about that, you guys can pause the video if you want to read about it, but I'm just going to exit out of it for right now because I already know what the Millennium Dawn mod does, and most likely most of you have played the Millennium Dawn mod because it's one of the most subscribed mods on the Steam Workshop. Also, I will be including a link in the description below so you guys can actually go ahead and check out this mod for yourselves, and so you can go ahead and download it and maybe even play along. So the first order of business, always in Hearts of Iron, is to go ahead and select your various research technologies. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to do modern support weapons. We're going to do the M16A2. And, hmm. We could do like a land doctrine research. I think that'd probably be a better way to do it. Instead of focusing every single technology into one sector. Oh, we really should have done construction, too. Okay, so we're going to do modern construction tools, and we'll switch out... Uh, we'll switch out the M16A2 for the land doctrine. And we're going to go for the mass assault doctrine. This is usually what I go for, and basically what this does is allows you to take massive amounts of troops and basically barrage through anything. So, essentially, it's the... Uh, <laughs> Doctrine of the Soviet Army. So, we're gonna go ahead and do that. That's basically what it's known for. Uh, the Soviet Doctrine. There we go. That's our research all set up. And, by the way, I'm not that great at Hearts of Iron 4, and it's been quite a while since I've really dived into this game. So, I might not be the best starting off, and we might get screwed, but please, I am begging you, just stay with me. Alrighty. So, now we have... Uh, some free civilian factories that we can go ahead and utilize to build various things in our nation. And I think what we're going to start off with here in the beginning is we're actually going to create a few more civilian factories. And we'll do that right here in Cairo. We'll do one in Alexandria, one in uh, Northern Sinai, and then we'll create two military factories in Sohag and the Red Sea. Once again, you know, I, I really apologize, guys, if I do butcher these words, <laughs> like the names of the provinces. I don't speak Egyptian or anything like that, and it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. I pronounce things, and stuff just flies out of my mouth, and yeah, it ends up being wrong a lot of the times. So, don't feel offended if, you know, I pronounce something wrong. I do apologize about that. And the next order of business is sorting out our military factories. So, let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to do convoys for our navy. We'll only do two of those, and we'll train up some... Hmm. We'll just do corvettes because it takes less resources. We only need steel for those. 
and we'll leave it on one. I don't want to waste too many resources on our Navy. In the beginning of the game, in all honesty, I'm really not worried about the Navy, so I'm just going to leave that as it is for right now, and, you know, that should work out okay. Next up, we need to go ahead and create some infantry units. Yes, yes. We'll do two of those bad boys, and of course we need some support equipment to go along with that. And I suppose we should also probably get some tanks. Um, that would be in the armored vehicles section. And we'll do battle tanks, the main battle tanks. And we are going to need some artillery as well. Let's do, we'll just do toad artillery. Sweet. All right, and that should be good for all of our armies and everything like that. As we get more military factories, we'll be, able, you know, we'll be able to pump in more and more production into various areas. Primarily infantry, that's basically what we're going to be focusing on, but of course we need armor, we need support weapons, and things like that. So we will be building those and stockpiling them when possible. All right, and it looks like we're in a little bit of a trade deficit, or actually an insufficient resource situation, not a trade deficit. So let's go ahead and remedy that. Unfortunately, we are going to have to spend a few of our factories to do that, which kind of really sucks, but we have to do it. So we're going to go ahead and use up three of our civilian factories to go ahead and remedy that problem. Did that fix it? No. Do we... What? We don't still... I think it just needs a little bit of time to activate, so we'll wait until we actually start the game to go ahead and do that. Now we need to go ahead and set our national focus. So let's see. I think I'm going to go with the industrial focus to begin with. I mean, we could go for like an ideological focus or an army focus, but uh, nah, I don't think so. We're going to go for the industrial focus. This will give us a 35% research bonus for industry. So that'll be really good. Also, the main reason why I'm going for that, if we open up the focus tree again, we can see that we can build a bunch of different things just by researching. So, you know, for instance, if we research military technology or military industry, then we'll get military factories. And that's the main reason why I'm actually going through the production or the industrial uh, tree first. Now let's go ahead and see. We have no divisions in basic training. So let's go ahead and just train up a few divisions of infantry at a time. We'll set these guys to train up in Cairo. And yeah, honestly, I think that should be good for right now. I'm not too worried about trying to build up the military or anything like that. I have other worries for the beginning of the game. Oh, no. We have a time. What? What? Oh, the party support system. It was because I hit the back button instead of hitting let's go. All right, anyways, I guess I'll go ahead and read through this. I wasn't going to originally, but I guess I'll go ahead and do it. Party support system. Millennium Dawn utilizes a party support system through national spirits that allows you to keep track of what your citizens think of their political parties right now. It will not be easy to convince the voters of a revolutionary new idea, unless a change in your country, be it natural or guided by you, makes them reconsider their position seriously and thoroughly. Countries will automatically and dynamically receive these drifts and popularities by pressing the button below. All right, very fair, very fair. So it looks like by pressing this, we are going to get a little bit of influence for radical Islam, nationalism, reactionary democracy, conservatism, social liberalism, and communism. Now, for this particular playthrough, I'm going to try and do a communist idealism. So that's basically what we're going for. And the reason why we want to do that is so that way we can readily go to war with people. If we're a sort of democratic, open, or anti-war party, then it's really going to be difficult for us to go to war with other countries, and we don't want that. We want our country to be a military country because, well, this is kind of a little bit of a military strategic game, so we don't, yeah, we don't want to be messing around with all those snowflakes. Ugh. So, I guess we can go ahead and start the game right now. Ooh, wow, <laughs> right off the bat, a treaty. Treaty of Asmara. Eritrea and Ethiopia have signed a Treaty of White Peace. Cool. Very cool. 
Ooh, and Switzerland joins the UN. Originally, the Swiss government had refused to join the United Nations after the end of the Second World War, pointing to the country's continued dedication to its own neutrality, which is especially weird considering the UN's main seat in Europe is the UNAG, the United Nations of Office in Geneva. Now, after a public referendum on the matter, the Swiss government has announced that the country would move forward to abandon its post as a, as a spectator and would now join the organization as a full member. All right, it's about time, Switzerland. Welcome to the family. I mean, it doesn't really matter too much for me. We're not going to be approaching Europe or going to war with Europe or hopefully messing around with Europe anytime soon. And I hope Europe does the same to us. I don't want them meddling with our, you know, affairs. And I don't want to be meddling in their affairs. I really don't care what's going on over there for right now. Really quickly, I just want to go ahead, select all the units, and put them into an army together. Oh, what's happening here? Ah, there we go. I don't know. Whoa, no, 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 no. What are you doing? Oh, boy. What did I just do? I had it all set up, and I messed it up. <laughs> all right, there we go. That's a lot better. Oh, I keep going to the edge of the screen with my mouse. Sorry about that, guys. Now we need to choose a commander for our guys here. Um, hmm. We have 49 units, so I don't think any of these generals are even going to work. We might have to do two different armies. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to do two different armies. So let's create another one over here. And we'll assign... Oh, uh, yeah, we'll assign that armor to it. Why not? Oh, no, and we'll even have to create a third army. Hmm. Alrighty. I didn't want to do that, but unfortunately, that's the way it's going to have to be for right now. Now that the army's all set, basically we can just go ahead and wait around. I'm not really going to give them any orders or anything like that because we're not going to war with anyone. Nothing's, you know, no impending doom is about to happen. So I'm just going to leave them doing their own thing in their own provinces, you know, patrolling around, killing bandits, killing criminals, and defending the people and freedom. So, yeah, they're going to do that and all that crap. Uh, Minsk agreement in effect. After many failed attempts, breaches of ceasefires, and broken border demarcations, the Ukrainian government and the pro-Russian insurgents have finally come to a peace agreement that seems to last. Both countries have retreated behind a ceasefire line 10 kilometers from the front, limiting fighting to a minimum. Minor breaches of the agreement are still reported, but peace seems to return to the Ukraine. Very well, that's good for them. Really quickly here, just examining the internal politics of Egypt, we can see that the most popular party right now, and that is the ruling party, the conservative party, is the NWP. They are in power right now. They have 40% of the overall popularity and the overall vote. So that's pretty, pretty good. Um, I don't really want to be a conservative, though. We want to move towards, you know, communism and socialism and all that greatness. The Egyptian Communist Party only has 8.9% of the vote, which considering, you know, they're communists and it's 2016, that's actually pretty darn good. Eventually, that will be like 80% and all of the people will want communism and we're going to take over the world and ignite a glorious socialist revolution that the Soviet Union could not obtain. It's going to be glorious, people. Don't even worry. The second most popular political party in our country is the Freedom and Justice Party. They're an Islamist party, and they have 36.4% of the overall popularity in our country. So, between the conservatives and the Islamists, they basically have the vast majority of the popularity in the country. All the other parties are either pretty much non-existent, or they have very minimal support among the populace. Just looking around the map for various targets, to our south is Sudan, and to our left is Libya. Then, on the eastern side, we have Israel. Those are the only three countries that border us, and we definitely can't go for Israel because they're backed by the United States. So, I'm not going to mess with the United States right off the bat. That is a really big thing to do, and it's very risky to do at the very beginning of the game. If we end up going to war with them and the USA joins, they're going to send over a bunch of troops with their navy. They're going to completely shrek me. All right, the Egyptian army has nothing on the U.S. military. Absolutely nothing. 
Like, the U.S. military, so overpowered. We're not going to win, okay? So my thought is, right, listen, are y'all listening? We're going to go for Sudan here to begin with. So we're going to justify, oh no, we can't do it. Ah, we need five more political power. Dang it. All right, I guess we'll have to let a few days pass. We'll get 55 political power, and then we'll be able to start working on our uh, war justification. Ooh, and we got some world news here, guys. 2016 Rio de Janeiro Olympics. For the first time in Summer Olympics history, the contest was hosted in South America, with the 2016 31st Olympiad taking place in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, from August 5th to August 21st. The games were not a great success for Brazil, with mass protests against the expensive contests, as well as weird incidents like one of the swimming pools turning to a bright green color. Ugh. The most successful NOCs were the United States, the United Kingdom, China, Russia, Germany, Japan, France, South Korea, Italy, and Australia. Brazil came in 13th, behind the Netherlands and Hungary. Fiji became a fan favorite when its Rugby Sevens won the gold. The first ever Olympic medal in Fiji's history. Wow, congrats, Fiji. I didn't even know that, but that's really cool. So the games are concluded, and we now have 55 political power. So we're going to go ahead, work on our war justification here against Sudan. It's going to take about 280 days, but that's okay. Don't worry, people. We have time. We have time. Oh no, Montenegro joins NATO. Now, I really don't like that because I don't want NATO to have more power because that means that they have a bigger faction now. And when they have a bigger faction, collectively, they have better security. So I, I really don't want that. I want the world to be as split up as possible and as hating each other as much as possible. Next up, we have Northern Ambition. Sweden is taking steps to turn away from its neutral foreign policy doctrines. Whether that will remain in a more active Swedish role in international peacekeeping or a more decisive role in starting local military conflicts still has to be seen, however. Okay. So the Swedes are getting a little bit antsy. That's okay. Um, once again, not really worried by that. It's mostly European and American news, so... Nothing too important going on on our end of the world. So now that our industrial focus is researched, let's go ahead and do the civilian industry research. That'll give us a building slot and a civilian factory, which will help out massively with production. You know, before I said I wasn't going to utilize all of my dockyards. However, I think it's pretty stupid to not do it when we're in a surplus right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and create two units or rather use two of my dockyards to produce Corvettes. So that'll make production a little bit faster. It's still going to be ridiculously slow. We're only making 4.56, so four and a half of these things every single year, which is really terrible, but it's better than only making 2.28 a year. Looks like one of our research slots has completed. So let's go ahead, scroll up to the top of the list, and start researching M16s. Then we're going to go ahead and do another national focus since civilian industry was completed. We're going to go ahead and do infrastructure this time around. Then we'll do military industry, industrial uh, development, and then we'll follow through with the civilian industry t uh, tree. So let's go ahead and start that. Now, since we are preparing for war against Sudan and all, we probably should set up the military to go ahead and have some orders against them, just so that way if, you know, a war does break out, before we, you know, have control over the situation, I want to be able to defend ourselves. So we're going to set up a front line there, and we'll make an offensive order to push the line up to there. Now with the other army here, we're going to go ahead and finish the line, and we'll have them complete the offensive line right there. Oh no, that's not completing it! Ah, go back! So it's a really simple battle plan for our two divisions of the army here. Basically, all they're going to do is form a front line and then begin pushing it on our order. So judging by the uh, comparison over here, we have a way stronger force than Sudan. Hopefully that's not going to change. And honestly, I, we should probably go into our production menu or our recruit and deploy menu. Sorry. 
Oh no, we are not making enough units. Why is this? Oh, because infantry requires support artillery. What about... Oh yeah, they also require it. Are there any infantry units that don't? What about the airborne brigade? They need motorized. Hmm. Unfortunately, I can't change any of these in the beginning. Because we don't, you know, we haven't gone to war, so we don't have any army experience. It appears that our research for modern construction tools has finished. So let's go ahead and select a new technology to go ahead and research. I'm probably going to continue in the industrial sector over here. And we'll probably actually just go for the next construction tools. There we go. The reason why I'm trying to go down this tree is because if you look at the statistics and the effects of the, the research, you can see that it increases the construction speed by 10%. So that's really what we're looking for in the beginning of the game. Currently, it's really slow. Construction rates are not the best. So we want to slowly pick away at that and make them better and better. Also, we did have to allocate some of our factories to actually trade, so that's going to dampen our, you know, speed as well. So we definitely want to have the highest construction speed possible. Ooh, alright, so it looks like we have a major Islamist rally going on. That's not exactly the best. Honestly, I'd rather have the conservatives in power than the Islamists, but if they do end up taking power, I guess so be it. Today, many Islamist elements of our countries have massed on the streets of our cities. They organized their efforts by themselves and were too great in numbers for our police to simply arrest. They demand a return to traditional values of the Quran and for a stricter law code modeled after Sharia. Ooh, alrighty. Moving on, moving on. Let's take a look at the internal politics of the nation. Ooh, no. Okay, it looks like that did put them in the popularity oh no <laughs> so they're now at a 41.46 percent popularity which is the majority for our country it doesn't look like we have any elections though how does that work are we not a democracy i mean i thought we were a democracy fiscal conservatives do not care about ideology and worldview they only care about commerce and personal freedom they will trade with anyone that trades with them, and they will pursue prosperity rather than military expansion. Okay. Well, that doesn't really tell me whether or not we're a democracy. Anyways, I don't see any elections going on there, so I'm not too worried about that. Alrighty, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this first episode off here. If you guys are enjoying the series so far, please be sure to leave a like please be sure to comment, and please, please, please subscribe. It really helps out, guys, and it really does mean a lot. So once again, thank you guys so, so much for tuning in, and I will see all of you lovely, amazing people in the next episode. Bye-bye.